one of the most brutal men of the 20th century was Joseph Stalin, the dictator of the Soviet Union, that helped to defeat Hitler during the Second World War. He was a man who would also purge his population, which resulted in the executions of millions of people and innocent civilians. Many others were sent to the gulags, the brutal labour camps. But Stalin would lead the Soviet Union for almost three decades, and he would consolidate his power with the NKVD, his brutal executioners that carried out his reign of terror. But Stalin rose from obscurity, and he was from a poor background, but he was seen as an iconic communist, and he was one of the 20th century's most important figures. But in 1953, at the age of 74, Stalin would die, and his final moments were not in keeping with his life. He was seen as a strong and powerful leader, but at the end of his life he was weak, and had deteriorated very quickly. But what is the story of the death of Stalin? To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. He was a man who was a sign of power and dominance over the Soviet Union, and he was greatly feared during his reign. He would create a dictatorship which would be focused around him, and Stalin made sure that no one ever spoke out against him. If someone disagreed with his policies and ideas, then chances are they would end up inside an NKVD execution chamber, or be sent to the gulags. This allowed Stalin to have no repercussions, and he ruled by fear, and he did put power in significant allies including Lavrenti Beria, the chief of the NKVD, who carried out many massacres and purges, even during the Second World War. But towards the end of the conflict, Stalin's health was not in the best shape. He was a man who smoked heavily, and he suffered from arteriosclerosis, the narrowing of the arteries. This condition is usually prevented through maintaining a healthy weight and by not smoking, but Stalin ignored the advice of his doctors. At the time of the victory parade in 1945, he was not very well at all, and what was supposed to be one of the best days of his life in power was overshadowed by the fact he had had a stroke a month before. He was seen as well enough to attend the huge spectacle, and he stood on top of Lenin's mausoleum, with other senior figures in government. But Stalin had intended to ride through the parade on horseback, but during a rehearsal he fell from his horse, and the responsibility for this was then handed over to General Zhukov. But in October 1945, he had a serious heart attack, and it was clear that Stalin was ill. But he did recover for a number of years, and he was told by his doctors to work less, and relax a lot more. He would take longer holidays away from the limelight, and in 1950 and 1951, he took long holidays and was away for five months, but then he began to suspect that his doctors were plotting to kill him. He was convinced that the doctors were plotting a treasonous plan to oust him, and he, in January 1952, ordered a doctor to be imprisoned when they told him to improve his health, as it would improve his chances of living longer. But this doctor then told him to retire for the sake of his health, and more doctors were then arrested for allegedly plotting to kill him and other senior politicians but Stalin remained a brutal leader up until his final years. From 1946, his public appearances became few and far between, and he would only give free speeches throughout these years, and two were only very short. But he would write less and would spend more of his time living peacefully inside his homes, but near to the end of his life, he was living at his Dhaka in Moscow. He was left on his own, and he would become depressed, and he would then invite his inner circle and allies for dinner, and to spend time with him. Khrushchev, who regularly visited Stalin, would state, As soon as he woke up, he would ring us, the four of us, referring to Georgi Malenkov, Lavrenti Beria and Khrushchev, and either invite us to see a film or start some long conversation about a question that could have been resolved in two minutes. In 1953, his health was continuing to decline, and he also became more paranoid, and he liked to worry his inner circle, as he would say. He liked to repeat to us, You are blind like kittens, Without me, the imperialists will throttle you, and he did suspect some of his closest friends. But on the 28th of February 1953, Stalin gathered Malenkov, Molotov, Khrushchev and Beria, along with some others, to his home for a night of entertainment and films. At 4am the guests left, and Stalin then went to bed in his quarters, and he told servants not to wake him and to not disturb him. A witness would say, We said goodbye to Comrade Stalin, and departed. I remember that when we were in the entrance hall, Stalin came out to see us all off. He was in a jocular mood and joked a lot. He waved his index finger or a fist and prodded me in the stomach, calling me Mikola. 
He always used the Ukrainian form of my name when he was in good spirits. Well, we left in good spirits too, since nothing had happened during the dinner. Those dinners did not always end on a happy note. But time went by, and throughout the day there were no noises or sounds heard from Stalin's room. At 11pm on the 1st of March, the housekeeper went into the room, and Stalin was found collapsed in a heap on the floor in his shirt and pyjama trousers. He was found in a solid state, unconscious, and he had wet himself. And as people tried to wake him, there was little that could be done. In the early morning of the 2nd of March, Beria and a number of doctors examined him and found he had very high blood pressure and was paralysed on the right side. This meant Stalin had had another stroke, which affected the left middle cerebral artery, and he was then moved to the dining room sofa and was covered over with a rug. Over the next few days, more doctors attended on him and tried to decrease his blood pressure, which went very high, and he was even treated with leeches, but things got worse. The doctors were worried and backed off, as they were reluctant to treat him, in case he had accused them of trying to kill him. But on the 5th of March 1953, at 9.50pm, Joseph Stalin died. He had been throwing up blood, and his stomach also began to hemorrhage, and because of this he died. The following day the people of the Soviet Union were told that their leader had passed away. An autopsy was carried out on the body which said, Pathologic examination revealed a large hemorrhage, localised to the area of the subcortical centres of the left cerebral hemisphere. The haemorrhage destroyed important areas of the brain and resulted in irreversible changes in the respiration and circulation. There was found significant hypertrophy of the left ventricle of the heart, numerous haemorrhages in the myocardium, in the stomach and intestinal mucosa, changes in the vessel more prominent in the cerebral arteries. These are results of hypertension or high blood pressure, the results of the examination revealed the irreversible character of Joseph Stalin's disease from the moment of brain haemorrhage. Therefore, all treatment attempts could not have led to a favourable outcome and prevent a fatal end. Those who witnessed his death claim that the death agony was terrible. He literally choked to death as we watched. Some people suspected others of killing Stalin and Lavrenti Beria fell under heavy accusation, especially when he was allegedly noted to have been heard ever saying, I took him out but he delayed medical treatment getting to the dictator, but the autopsy confirmed he had died in the same manner that stroke victims would, and some believed he was killed by a blood thinner that affected his stomach, but Berry himself would later be executed. On the 6th of March 1953, Stalin's body was placed on display in the Hall of Columns in the House of the Unions, and it was on display for three days. Then on the 9th of March it was taken to Red Square, and was interred in Lenin's mausoleum, where it lay in state until 1961. Speeches were given, and there was a huge outpouring of grief across the Soviet Union, and many people flocked to pay their respects. It even caused a crush that killed 109 people. But the death of Joseph Stalin saw the end of one of the most influential and important men of the 20th century. He came from nothing to become the most powerful man in the Soviet Union, and one of the most important men in the world. But he was the man that defeated Hitler, but he was also a leader who had executed huge numbers of his own population. But his death was brought on by his unhealthy lifestyle, and the fact he had a number of strokes and heart attacks that left him significantly weaker. But Stalin still captivates the world today, but his death was one which was rather painful. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.